Hi everyone, I'm here to tell you something about uh, uh, visualizing uh, music with machine learning. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm the head of digital analytics at Greenhouse. So what I basically do every day is we, I make sure that we measure stuff. So we track data, we also analyze data and stuff like that. Um, but uh, besides that, I'm, I also consider myself a digital explorer that's fascinated by, uh, as you can see, data analytics and visualization. Um, and this is really a project where I, yeah, I've been part of the data craft within Greenhouse for seven years now. Uh, and I really try to use the skill that I acquired throughout those years for a personal project. So this doesn't really have something to do with Greenhouse, but without Greenhouse, I wouldn't have been able to make this. Um, so this is mainly the story of a fan, and the story starts on this day in 2018. Does anyone of you know what happened on that day? If you've read the uh, details of the talk, you maybe can guess. But uh, this is the day that uh, Avicii died, and later uh, uh, it was announced that he committed suicide, which is actually a really sad thing that happened. Uh, I also just watched like his documentary, True Stories, two weeks before that, so I don't know if any of you have seen the documentary, but it ends on quite a positive note, because he decides to break bonds with his manager and just make music, and that's the thing that he likes, and then two weeks after that, he commits suicide. So that was really weird for me. Um, and it was also the first time that an artist had died, and it really hit me on a personal level, because I just really like his music. Um, and I just, yeah, it was something that really touched me. Uh, so I decided uh, that maybe I can use my skills as data analyst to discover something new in his music. So I took his three releases. Uh, the first album, True, which contains the song Wake Me Up. I think you all know the song Wake Me Up by Avicii. Uh, the second release, Stories, which has uh, this, uh, uh, some other songs on them, um, like Broken Arrows. That's quite a, a familiar song from that album. And the last one is... Uh, the EP called Avicii 01, which is just a release with six songs on it. Uh, so I started out by looking at the lyrics of uh, his music. So he's a DJ that includes lyrics in all of his songs and is also involved in writing those lyrics. Uh, and I did that by manually copy-pasting every lyric into a text file. So this was not really an advanced uh, uh, thing that I did. Uh, I built everything in Python and the first time that I actually run the script I ac accidentally cleared all the text files so I had to copy paste everything again. So that was a big learning uh, uh, opportunity for me. And then I used the uh, Google um, Natural Language API from the Google Cloud Platform. So I don't know if you know the Google Cloud Platform but Google uh, in a similar way as Amazon does provides all the technologies that they use to build their services to the general public as well. So I can call a service from Google to do something that Google does really well uh, for my own project. So in this case, I want to do text analysis. And this allows me to convert each song into a data point that contains the title and the album. That's just a label I attach to it. Uh, and a sentiment score, which ranges from minus one to plus one. And a magnitude, which is basically the strength of the emotion. So is it really powerful or is it just a weak mention of the emotion in the song. Uh, and I stored everything into an Excel sheet. And I don't know if you work with data. Is there anyone who works with data in the, in the crowd? Or works with Excel? If you, don't work with, if you don't work with data, but do work with Excel, I don't know. But yeah, um, whatever. You probably know this thing called a Boolean in programming, which is like a true or false. Well, Excel tried to be smart, and he called the album true a Boolean. But I actually just want to use it as a text label. So that was a really fun insight in the uh, in his uh, discography for me. Uh, and then I use Matplotlib, which is a Python library to visualize data to actually see how the results looked. Uh, and this is the function I built. It's pretty long. I'm not a really good programmer, probably. I'm really a practical programmer. But I made it into a single function that I can just uh, uh, yeah, feed a data frame uh, and a magnitude amplifier, which is something that increases uh, the size of the, the dots you'll see in the scatterplot later on. And I plotted everything in this uh, emotion grid. So the negative songs are on the left, the positive songs are on the right. The stronger the emotion, the higher the song goes. The weaker the emotion, the lower it goes. And this is the first re uh, release, so the album True. So you see the album is quite, yeah, uh, near the middle, quite neutral maybe. And there's a really big outlier on the top left, which is the song called uh, Liar Liar. If you know it, it's actually quite negative as well. It's funny that the outlier is called Liar Liar, in my opinion. Uh, then there's the release Stories, which has way more positive songs. Uh, and the last uh, EP has six songs on them. So two negative songs, two neutral songs, and two uh, positive songs. And this is actually something that looks like a quite balanced release, if you look at the results. Uh, so it's interesting that right before he decided to commit suicide, he sort of had the most balance in his music. Uh, so these are the three albums 
compare to one another. So the first one, the second one, and the last one. So you clearly see a development, I think, in his uh, songs. But then I started talking to people and I basically asked myself the question, am I capable of getting any true meaning out of this text analysis done by an algorithm by Google? Uh, so I want to do the same thing with you. And I want to apply this thing called a smell test. I don't know if you know what a smell test is, besides doing a real smell test for something, of course. It's basically whenever an algorithm uh, provides you with an output, you check whether the output makes sense. So there's this really funny website called um, Sporious Correlations. And there are examples like this on it that see that there's a correlation between the number of people that drown by falling into a pool and the films that Nicolas Cage appeared in. Uh, probably that's not true. A more uh, familiar example is the one by, uh, with swimming and ice cream sales. So whenever ice cream sales go up, uh, the amount of children that drown by swimming also go up. That's not because ice cream sales cause children to drown, but probably temperature goes up and people buy more ice cream and swim a bit more. So I want to do the same with you. So I'm going to give you some examples where on the right there are the lyrics. They may be a bit small for some people. On the left, uh, you will have to guess the result. So this is the example of the Liar Liar song because I already spoiled this one for you. So here's one of his famous songs, Wake Me Up. On the right are the lyrics and I don't show the results yet. So you have like 30 minutes to scan the lyrics and <coughs> determine whether you think it's positive, neutral or negative. I have a nice stopwatch so I can actually keep uh, count. About 10 seconds left. So who of you thinks it's a positive song? Nobody? You can raise your hand if you uh, agree with what I say. Who thinks it's a neutral song? That's a few people. And who thinks it's a negative song? Also quite a few people. Well, the algorithm says it's a neutral song. So this is a something we're not really agreeing uh, over. Okay, the next song, Dear Boy, is one of my personal favorites. So the lyrics are on the right, you don't know this song probably, and the result will be on the left. So again, I give you about 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to go. All right, who of you thinks it's a negative song? A few people. Who thinks it's a neutral song? Who thinks it's a positive song? The algorithm says it's a positive song. I'm happy that my favorite song is a positive song. Then the next one, Gonna Love Ya. Spoiler alert, the <laughs> title gives it away, I think, but uh, I'll give you like 10 seconds for this one. Just read through it, but I think this part gives it away, but. <laughs> okay. Then who thinks it's a positive song? <laughs> who thinks it's a neutral song or a negative song? It's a really positive song. It's his most positive song uh, on the release, according to the algorithm. And then uh, somewhere in Stockholm, this, this is one I used when I presented the project in Stockholm, which is really fun to do because he's Swedish. Um, the lyrics are on the right. I'll give you 30 seconds again to read through it. So about 10 seconds left. So who of you thinks it's a positive song? Who thinks it's a neutral song? Who thinks it's a negative song? Or like critical, maybe that's better. But uh, the algorithm says it's a, a negative song. But to get back to the original question, am I capable of getting any true meaning out of this? We all disagree about most of the songs. So probably the algorithm is not really a good fit for what I try to achieve with the research. Um, so I had two options here. I could either, either like go back and find out a, a different method to find through meaning in music, but I did really like the shape. So what I did, which is kind of, at, kind of atypical for a data analyst, I went with what felt right and what looked right. So I followed my creativity instead of my data analysis uh, feelings. Uh, so these are all the songs combined. And if you um, remove like all the 
uh, like plot elements and then apply the colors of the albums, you get this shape, which is kind of interesting because you can see the three releases combined into one visual where every color, the gray one is the first album, uh, the pink one is the second album and the yellow one is his latest release. Uh, and then I prepared it for print and I decided, hmm, I just like this visual, so I put it on a t-shirt. So then I had a t-shirt which was a data visualization of my favorite music. And that was something that I just really liked. So I can use my favorite music and some programming, it's a bit more than you see here, to j print a unique t-shirt which represents the music that I like, which is something I'm just really proud of because I have my own personal wearable homage to Avicii, which is yeah, some, something I'm just I'm really happy with. Um, I also started thinking, oh, this is all an algorithm, so how would it look for different artists? So does any one of you know Jack Johnson? His songs sound quite positive, right? Quite happy, quite optimistic. Uh, well, these are his three first releases, and you can see it a bit over here already, but he's quite a critical thinker, apparently. So he, he talks, when you listen to it, it's actually a lot about what's wrong with society and stuff like that. So the sounds are really optimistic, but the content of the lyrics are really, yeah, criti critical, to put it mildly. Um, I also started thinking about, okay, what about marketing? Can I use the images that I generate in, in a quick way to use them for, like, to promote the t-shirts? Uh, and I use this website called Redbubble, which is a drop shop shipping website, so you just upload an image, and then it generates all sorts of product images, and I just Googled for, can I use Redbubble images to promote my work? And it said, yes, definitely. So I was really happy I could just use the automatically generated content to pro uh, market my work. So I get this image from Redbubble, I apply some Photoshopping, and then I have a product image. So within one hour, I can go from nothing to a product image. Uh, it's like a semi-automated process. So here you see some more examples. This is the Avicii t-shirt. Le Maitre is a band from, you would say, France, but they are from Norway. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, Rumors, I think most of you know that album. And on the right, you have uh, a radio channel of GTA Vice City, which is a game I really like, and it has a lot of like cuddly, emotional songs on it, but I just really liked the radio channel. Uh, so this was like part one of the project, but it continues. Uh, so on June 6th of last year, uh, there was a new album released by Avicii, a posthumous album where all the people who worked with him on his latest album completed the songs for him. Uh, so I decided, hmm, maybe I can do something new for his album. So the album is called Tim, because I don't know if most of you know, but the real name of Avicii is Tim Burke. Um, and I did the same analysis. So you have the like negative songs on the left, the positive ones on the right, and the neutral ones in the middle. Again, a quite balanced release. But I wanted to do something else because maybe I was just sort of done with my like dots uh, uh, and using the dots as a plot. So I changed the algorithm a little bit. So these are all the indexes of the song. So here you see song one, song two, song three, song four, stuff like that. And I don't know if you can guess it a little bit, but I made the algorithm like connect the dots as you used to do as a small kid. So here you see, oh, I'll show you the animation. So here you see all the lines getting connected, but instead of drawing a straight line, I could also set it to dry, draw a curved one. So that's this result. So then you see the line pulling towards each of the songs, as a, almost like each song has a sort of gravity to it. And what's really interesting is that this really resembles a T for me. It's almost like the autograph of Tim Burke that sort of came up doing a text analysis with the machine and visualizing it in Python. So I again put that on a t-shirt, which is the t-shirt I'm wearing now as well. Uh, and I was really happy with my new t-shirt, even more than with my previous t-shirt. Uh, so now I have an algorithm that can create like almost an autograph looking signature of a text file uh, that's based on lyrics, basically. So this is Avicii Tim. This is <coughs> Death Point Random Access Memories. And this is Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. So you could consider this a real, if you would see this, you could interpret it as a true autograph, I think. Uh, I also uh, started adding a little extra to the t-shirt, so instead of just drawing the plot, do a little extra. So uh, I went to a show by uh, Madian called Good Faith, and he's really into alternative electronic music. And this was the result of his album, which was interesting, but I also thought like, it's not really interesting, but I really liked uh, the colors that he used in the release. He has quite a bold, type of red, and he had this hat during a show uh, which had this life symbol on it, but in that color. So I sort of make, made a mock-up of that symbol, and then I combined everything into an abstract visual of uh, basically the tour that I saw. So these are represents the full album visualized in a more abstract way. 
I also printed that on a t-shirt. Here are my, I have a friend at work who makes, likes making these pictures. So he says, sit like that, look like that. So it's almost really <laughs> professional. Um, uh, but I also tried to give one to a friend. So I know this guy, Fred, and he's from uh, the US. And I know him through uh, an analytics event. So we just met two years ago. And we, it was like meeting a new friend instantly. Uh, and he was talking about this band called Cream. And I'm like, Cream? I don't know if some of you know Cream, but it's a band that Eric Clapton played in. Eric Clapton is probably more familiar. But he was, I was about to present my Avicii project there, and he was like, you don't know Cream? How can you talk about music and not know Cream? Uh, so this year, when I met him again, I decided to do an analysis of the uh, Goodbye album by Cream. And this was the result, <laughs> which is, again, a quite interesting line. Uh, and I applied a little bit of the visuals you see in the album. So th there are shades of purple in there. Uh, into this visual. So this is the final result. So you see the three shades of purple. And I also printed that on a t-shirt. And he was actually nice enough to wear it during his presentation. So here you see Fred. He even says thank you to me. But uh, during, wearing the t-shirt during a presentation at an analytics event, which is quite awesome. Um, but my story was about visualizing music with machine learning. And I think it's more about a magical moment that when you use like technology and data visualization creatively, you can come up with something like this. That's just, yeah, it looks like a man has like drawn it, even though it's totally uh, generated by machines. Uh, so first of all, thank you for listening to my story. Next to that, th a big thanks to Avicii, because besides making really good music, he was a really big inspiration. If he, was, if he wouldn't have existed, I wouldn't have made this project. Um, if you want to do it yourself, I have the uh, whole code on GitHub. So you can go to uh, the GitHub page. If you're like, hmm, I would like to see my favorite artist visualized in a similar way, I have a website that you can request one. I'll just make the visual. You don't have to buy anything. So this is not a sales thing. Um, and if you want to say hi, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Uh, these should have been white, but they changed by plugging it in. Uh, thanks for listening to my story.